in this lecture we will talk about the physiologic anatomy and innervation of the bladder as we have started the urine formation so it's now important to discuss the urinary bladder as well in this lecture specifically we will talk about the physiologic anatomy of the urinary bladder and in the next lecture we will talk about the innervation of the bladder so the urinary bladder is basically a chamber of smooth muscles this is basically a chamber of smooth muscles which basically contains a urine and it has basically two main parts it has main two parts the body this is the body of the bladder which is made of smooth muscles the detrusor muscles and it has neck so its two main parts are the body of the bladder and the neck of the bladder its its main cavity is its body and the funnel shaped area this funnel shaped area is the neck of the bladder this funnel shaped neck of the bladder it basically goes down inferiorly it goes down inferiorly and anteriorly so it is going inferiorly down and towards anterior side and then it meets with the urethra and it basically passes through the urogenital triangle now the muscles of the smooth muscle uh, sorry this the muscles of the urinary bladder the smooth muscles of the urinary bladder are called detrusor muscles and the importance of these muscles is that they can contract simultaneously all the muscles in the urinary bladder will contract simultaneously and when they contract the pressure inside the bladder can go up to 40 to 60 mm of mercury so they can increase the pressure when this bladder contracts it can increase the pressure so much that uh, it can push the urine out of the bladder now the muscles the muscles that the detrusor muscles of the urinary bladder are made of such cells the cells which are connected with each other in such a way that they have very low resistance for any action potential so any action potential entering this one cell can easily go without any resistance to this second cell and then can go to this uh, third cell and then fourth and fifth cell without much resistance so that once any nerve signals excites the bladder all the action potential can easily spread throughout the body and neck of the bladder and the whole bladder can contract simultaneously and the pressure in the bladder can increase and it basically helps in the micturition process now the neck of the the neck of the uh, bladder the neck of the bladder it is basically funnel shaped it is going down inferiorly and anteriorly and this part this neck is basically also having the internal sphincter this is having the internal sphincter and the internal sphincter basically protects the flow of urine from bladder towards the urethra and it basically keeps the neck of the bladder closed now the back of the bladder if we cut the bladder for example this is the bladder and we cut it here if we cut it here we will see that on the posterior side on the posterior side we have a triangle shaped area a triangle shaped area and this is the triangle shaped area this triangle shaped area is known as trigon this is known as trigon and it is different it's mu the mucosa of this trigon is very much different from the mucosa of rest of the bladder because the mucosa the, un the underlying structure of the trigon is smooth while the mucosa of the rest of the bladder has rugi like this it has rugi now it has other importance as well because the trigon is a very sensitive area the trigon is very sensitive area another important thing is that once the bladder neck passes the urogenital uh, tri uh, triangle it meets or it connects with the urethra so this is basically the urethra and the urine comes to the bladder with the help of ureter these are two ureters these are two ureters the ureters once enter into the bladder they move inside the mass of the bladder few centimeters and then open on the posterior side these are the regions where the urinary bladder will basically open sorry the ureters will open so basically urine is coming in these ureters urine is coming in these ureters and the ure the ureters basically pass through the body of the bladder and then they open in the bladder they open inside the bladder and urine basically enters the bladder with the help of these uh, ureters inside the uh, bladder the body the bladder is basically having two main parts the body of the bladder and the neck the neck of the bladder the body is basically made of the detrusor muscles and it can contract it can contract and it can generate a lot of pressure on the posterior side of the on the posterior side of the bladder there is a triangular shaped area which is known as the trigon which is very much sensitive and has smooth mucosa is compared to mucosa of rest of the bladder which has rugi once the neck of the um, uh, once the neck of the bladder has passed the urogenital triangle it becomes the urethra at the junction at the junction of uh, the trigon and the posterior uh, the and the neck of the bladder there is internal sphincter there is internal sphincter at this side at this very region there is internal sphincter and this internal sphincter basically keeps the bladder uh, closed or the neck of the bladder closed so that no urine can pass from the bladder into the urethra until and unless sufficient amount of urine is collected in the bladder now there is another uh, sphincter which is known as the external sphincter so here we had the internal sphincter and here now we have the external sphincter after the neck of the uh, bladder 
after the neck of the bladder we have the external sphincter the difference the difference between the internal and the external sphincter the external sphincter the difference is that the external sphincter is having some skeletal muscles it is having some skeletal muscles the internal sphincter is having smooth muscles and some fibers which elastic fibers which keeps this area closed or which basically helps in closing the internal sphincter but the external sphincter is having some smooth muscles fibers and this basically helps to give uh, uh, an external support or willingness so that the the person can control it willingly and this is not an automatic sphincter as compared to the internal sphincter so the external sphincter this sphincter this external sphincter is very much in the control of the human being and they can basically uh, allow this sphincter to open or close so whenever the um, the environment or the uh, there is a proper place to void and to micturate then the human being uh, go to the washroom and they basically uh, willingly open the external sphincter and allow the micturation or urine to go out the internal sphincter basically is not in the control of human beings so that's all about the uh, physiologic anatomy of the urinary bladder the bladder is having a body a neck urethra internal sphincter external sphincter and trigone the internal sphincter is not in our control while the external sphincter is in con our control the body of the bladder is basically made of muscles known as detrusor muscles and the detrusor muscle is made of fibers which are connected uh, the cells which are connected with each other with such a low resistance that any action potential exciting one cell can basically spread to all the uh, all the uh, cells and this the, the bladder can basically contract simultaneously and it can generate enough pressure up to 40 to 60 mm of mercury to push out urine and the urine basic the bladder basically receives the bladder basically receives the urine with the help of ureters which basically enters the body of the ureter then move inside the wall of the uh, urinary bladder and then open inside the uh, bladder so that's all about the physiologic anatomy of the urinary bladder